This is a tutorial on slope and rate of change. A rate of change is simply how much the dependent variable changes divided by how much the independent variable changes. So let's look at this example and see if we can figure this out. Bob is driving 1,220 miles to Las Vegas, Nevada. The first day Bob drives for 8 hours and covers 400 miles. The second day he drives for 9 hours and 540 miles. And then the last day Bob drives for 4 hours and 280 miles. What are the dependent and independent variables and what is the rate of change for each day? Well, let's see. Our independent variable should be time. And our dependent variable should be the miles that Bob drives. This is because the amount of miles that Bob drives is dependent on how much time he spends driving. So let's see if we can figure out the rate of change for each day. The first day, Bob drives 400 miles, which we said is our de dependent variable and goes in the numerator. And he does that in eight hours, so that's our independent variable and goes in the denominator. And if we divide 400 by eight, we find out that Bob has been driving 50 miles per hour. Let's try the second day. He drives 540 miles, which again is our dependent variable and goes in the numerator. And he does that in nine hours, which is our independent variable and goes in the denominator. And if we divide 540 by nine, we find out that Bob has been driving 60 miles per hour. And then lastly, Bob covers 280 miles in the last day. He does that in four hours. So in those four hours, Bob has been driving 70 miles per hour. Now let's talk about slope. Slope and rate of change are almost exactly the same thing. Let's look at our formula here on the end. The change in y over the change in x is our slope. Well, if you remember, our y is usually our dependent variable, and our x is usually our independent variable. So really, there's nothing different about this formula than there was in the rate of change formula. Slope, though, is usually used in mathematical principles, especially when we want to try to find a slope of a line. So let's look at this red line that we have here, this linear equation, and we'll see if we can't find the slope of it. To find the slope, basically pick two points on the line, preferably points that are easy to find, and you would count how much you go up and then how much you go over. The amount you go up is called the rise and the amount you go over is called the run. So an easy to, way to remember the formula for a slope is to calculate the rise over the run. Here we rose one, two, three, four, five, and we ran one, two, three, four, five to the right. So our slope is simply five over five or the slope of this line is one. Here are two more examples and let's see if we can find their slopes. Let's pick this point and this point. Here we're gonna go down one, two, three, four, and five. So our rise is a negative five because we went down and then we're going to go to the right one two and three so our run is a positive three so our slope is a negative five thirds let's try the next example we'll pick this point and this point here, because this is a horizontal line, we will not rise at all. We will only run. So here, we're going to run three. 
So our rise is equal to zero and our run is equal to three. So our slope and the slope of all horizontal lines is equal to zero. Now there are four basic types of slope. If your line is sloping upwards and to the right, it is said to have a positive slope. And if it is sloping downward and to the right, it is said to have a negative slope. So if you're going uphill, you have a positive slope. And if you're going downhill, you have a negative slope. Now if you have a vertical line, a vertical line is said to have an undefined slope. And a horizontal line, just like we saw in the previous problem, has a zero slope. The last part of this tutorial is comparing slopes. Let's look at our first example. We have two lines, a red one and a black one. Now when we were going to compare these slopes, we would say that the red line has a steeper slope than the black line. A way to think of this is if you think of these lines as hills, which hill would be steeper or which hill would be harder to walk up? Well, looking at these, the red line looks like it would be harder to walk up. But there's a mathematical way to calculate this as well. First, you would take the absolute value of both slopes. So we have a negative 3 and a negative 3 halves. Take the absolute value of these, we end up with 3 and 3 halves. Now whichever slope or whichever absolute value of the slope is greater, that line has a steeper slope. So 3 is greater than 3 halves, so the line with the slope of negative 3 is steeper than the line with the slope of negative 3 halves. So let's try this on the next example. Here again we have our red line with a slope of negative 3. And then we have a black line with a slope of 6 sevenths. Now if you can't tell which one looks steeper by the graph, take the absolute value of both slopes. So we're going to take the absolute value of negative 3 and the absolute value of 6 sevenths. This comes out to be 3 and this one comes out to be 6 sevenths. 3 is much greater than 6 sevenths, so the line with the slope of negative 3 has a steeper slope than the line with the slope of 6 sevenths. And that completes this tutorial.